at your afternoon summary. Boy, is this different. Yesterday, I was sitting in the sun. Today, it's in the 40s. I'm freezing. I just got through my hair. I'm wearing my fun hat because we're supposed to have some fun. We're happy. We're blessed. We're free. We're happy. We're blessed. We're free. <clears throat> That's what we talk about, how to stay free. My strategies are all about staying free no matter when this happens, right? You're going to need to prepare to keep your freedoms and to keep your currency. Do not ever give them to anybody. Always keep your currencies in, until it's time to go to the bank. And hopefully you're using my freedom strategies, the three steps to a safe exchange. And you can get those just by emailing down below. <clears throat> the first time you're hearing of it. Uh, <clears throat> shouldn't be drinking my shake. While I'm doing this. But the day got away from me, guys. I had to get my hair done. So, and please uh, continue to pray for my hairdresser who's struggling with cancer. Um, we had to reschedule my last appointment. So, <clears throat> anyways, so here's the significant news today out of Iraq because I'm using still Sandman's information or his links. I haven't heard a thing from him, so keep praying. It's 1:11 right now. Open doors. I noticed the time at one. I noticed the time today at 1:11 and at 2:22. <laughs> Did you? I'm just saying it's 4:55 now. 5:5 five, five is grace. Four is new beginnings. Going forward in faith without doubt. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. There's so many. Uh, tell me what kind of miracle signs and wonders you're seeing. Uh, I love to hear that, guys. I love to see the miracle signs and wonders like the Cardinals during my broadcast, my live coffee and conversation yesterday. Our coffee and conversation this morning was awesome. If you missed it, I'll put a link down below so you can check it out. Guys, we do that every morning. We do coffee and conversation. Not always in the morning. Sometimes it's a little afternoon because I'm married to a firefighter and I'm chiming, you know, and he also works two jobs here in Maine. Anybody else? My husband works two jobs. I have two businesses. I have, we, we keep busy, right? None of us are retired, so that's why I do these summaries. Probably like a lot of you. Uh, so there was this article. Everybody's celebrating it. It's Ed Alfader or whatever that holiday is, whatever they name it, started today. It's three days. So don't expect a lot. But I'm still going to do be doing these summaries so you can keep your 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 eye on it, right? Because they could be tricky. It could happen. So it said Netravon Barzani's diplomatic mission to Baghdad. Um, in Baghdad, it said, against a backdrop of long-standing tensions and unresolved issues between Baghdad and the Kurdistan region, President Netravan Barzani's recent visit to the Iraqi capital has sparked optimism and garnered widespread attention. The visit, marked by a series of high-level meetings and diplomatic engagement, comes at a crucial juncture as both sides seeks to address complex challenges and foster greater cooperation. President Barzani's arrival in Baghdad preceded by mounting tensions and legal rulings from the federal court signifies a concerted effort to confront and resolve key issues facing the region. With the impending visit of Iraqi Prime Minister Muhammad Shial al-Sadani to Washington, where discussions with the Biden administration are anticipated, the timing of President Barzani's visit takes on an added significance. You know, he's supposed to be in Washington, 14th or 15th, meetings on the 15th, probably travel here on the 14th. Amid the backdrop, President Barzani wasted no time engaging in substantive discussions upon his arrival. His meetings with Prime Minister al-Sudani, Iraqi President Abdul Latif Rashid, and other key stakeholders highlighted a will to address critical issues such as employee salaries, local elections, and allocation of resources, including oil revenues and the national budget. I guarantee the HDL was in there, the the impending currency revaluation, which we know um, Al Sudani has mentioned many times that he thinks the Iraqi um, dinar will supersede the U.S. dollar, and I'm sure he's right because <laughs> they got a lot of good things going on. Um, in addition to these bilateral discussions, President Barzani's participation in broader forums such as a coordination framework, meeting for Shiite parties, and the state administration coalition emphasizes the importance of multilateral dialogue in addressing complex political and administrative challenges. Furthermore, President Barzani's diplomatic outreach to the American and French ambassadors underscores the region's commitment to fostering positive relationships with key internal partners, thereby enhancing stability and prosperity. Top-notch start. So, so he's just, it's a long article. I didn't want to go into all of it, but I did want to talk about that's the one thing that's really going on. 
Um, and you do know that they reached an agreement, a bilateral agreement for security with the U.S. yesterday. That was a breaking news yesterday that I broke on right here. So I hope you will subscribe and tap the bell. We're bringing you stuff that nobody else gets like when we get this. I always do the afternoon summaries because that's when most of the intel is coming in from all the other providers. So I do the full spectrum so you can get the full picture. Why? If you want a place to go where you can just catch up on this and what's going on, and let's say you only have time to catch up on the weekend, you can go to my my 10-minute videos, right? Five 10-minute videos is about 50 minutes, and it's all details, right? You can catch up in a week's in one setting while doing that versus watching several hour-long presentations. I'm just saying, I have hour-long presentations too, but I'm just saying this is a quick way for you to get the information without the fluff. Um, then we've got Guru Militiaman. Well, why are they, okay, they must have missed, quote, whatever. Article quote, al-Sudani uttered a very important phrase, keep the dinar. I bear witness that the Iraqi dinar will return to its lofty economic value as it was. <laughs> Thank you, God. Prophetically, he's always speaking through me. I didn't know that was going to be the first thing on this summary. Uh, <laughs> lofty economic value is not 1310. It's not 1159. It's not 1182 or 1160 or any of those other numbers. Thank you, militia man. It's back to the previous era, like they said. They shut this thing down at $3.22. The true value from the IMF estimates were about 280. Those are the word, though. Um, those are their words, not mine. And in print, they can support it. Remember, Iraq was at $35 a barrel of oil. It's 85 right now. Thank you, Militiaman. Um, they add in all the extra revenue streams, and we know they're massive, and they're just going to keep growing. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. This, some of these I read ahead of time. Um Well, this person is saying there's really no proof anywhere that the U.S. government is actually holding an Iraqi dinar. What do you think about that? Well, this is what I'm going to say about that. I'm not arguing. Didn't even say the person's name. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying when Clinton was in office and the Iraqi dinar were valued, that was the first time ever in my lifetime, and I'm 58 now, haven't seen it since, where they had a surplus they didn't have a deficit. They went from a deficit to a surplus. And that was because they were holding Kuwaiti dinar when it revalued. So are you thinking they're not doing the same thing now? I don't know. Maybe he's right. I don't know who's right. Nobody really knows because, you know, I'm not a fly on the wall in the government. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> All of us can just look from the outside. But I do have auditing experience with Price Waterhouse, And I do know a lot about banks and financing and how this transaction will go down and how you can stay safe no matter what they do and how crazy the banking world is right now. It doesn't matter. It's the same banking world. <laughs> even when it goes quantum. I even understand that because God told me to study blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. So please subscribe, tap the bell because I provide a much needed clarity, truth, facts, and optimism to this whole scene. Um, so now you got Frank 26 to release executive order 13303. In his opinion, it was a domino effect that also released the DFI funds. In his opinion, the currency exchange of the Iraqi dinar is under the DFI fund. That's fund accounting. Um, I know that because I had to study that to be a CPA in Florida. Executive Order 13303 has not been resigned. Therefore, the DFI fund is free to be returned. The re therefore, Iraqi needs to protect those funds with the new exchange rate. To not see Biden resign this executive order, it means the monetary reform new exchange rate is free as a bird to be exposed. I agree with him. He didn't sign it or resign it, whatever. They've been resigning it all these years and then they stopped. So I'm excited. <laughs> Guys, it's about to get really good. I hope you're enjoying the journey because if you're not enjoying the journey, it's just because you haven't been part of my family. We've been enjoying it the whole time. Margaret's Mysteries. <laughs> it's insane. It's fun. Um, there's another guru here that um, I'm not even going to address because I don't know where he came from. Um, so it just... You know, it's just saying that we will, we very well will see that the Iraqi dinar float on the global market at the end of this year or early next year. I Maybe he's right, but I don't want to push it out that far. I don't think it's that far because God has had me 
He's been saying it's done and he continues to say it's done. It's, he continues to give me miracle signs and wonders that it is done. And I trust him. He's never lied. Frank 26. The reason why Sudani is going to Washington is, is about the monetary reform. End of story. Um, Militia man had comments here about dinar and dollar. This piece was from March 4th of this year and is redone again by stating that we are going to overthrow the, ver the dollar very soon. We'll be making it hard for the citizens to want to let their dinar go. Al Sudani stated, as we noted to before, to keep the dinar as it will return to its lofty economic value as it was before. So he's restating. We keep restating that. And the central bank... There was an article quoted, the central bank is preparing a report to lift the ban on 28 Iraqi banks. Boom, chicka, boom, boom, boom. Is that enough of a summary for you today? Guys, it is their holiday over there. He could do it during this day. There's other presidential meetings going on. There's other meetings going on over there. So the government hasn't stopped, even though everybody's really celebrating for the next few days. So what do you think? Comment down below. Do you think it's going to happen during this holiday? I know everybody wanted it to happen before the holiday. So when's the next date you think it's going to happen? The 15th? Or it can happen anytime. It could happen this Friday, which is the 12th. <laughs> Just say it. That's the end of El Fadar. So if it happens this weekend, are you ready? I think you should be ready. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. I'm just having fun. I hope you are too. God bless. What are you having for dinner tonight? We're having fish tacos and I'm excited. Talk to you later. Bye.